Hello and welcome to the Open Charge Alliance webinar. Today we'll be discussing the combination of Shademo and OCPP. Um, my name is Martijn Simus. I'm a communication advisor here at the Open Charge Alliance, and I will be your host and moderator for today. Um, Milan, can you put on the next slide, please? Okay, we will start off with introductions to Shademo, the Open Charge Alliance. And next up, then we will have a discussion and uh, some more insights in the combination of the two of the OSPP and the Shademo. Uh, during the presentations, it's possible to ask questions. Please use the questions or chat box in your GoToWebinar menu. And after the presentations, we will try to answer them. Yes. And we will start off with an introduction by uh, Imatsu-san of uh, Shademo. I will make him a presenter. One moment. Ah, yes. You are visible now. The floor is yours. Okay. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Can you see my ah. screen? Now we see your okay. screen. Okay. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon, uh, my fellow participants. My name is Tomoya Imas, uh, the chair of Chademo Technical Committee. Uh, I'm very glad to have this opportunity to introduce OCA Chademo joint activity result on OCPP Chademo compatibility definition. Uh, before the introduction, let me make some short introduction about Chademo itself. Uh, you may already know Chademo is a name with a standard and association. Uh, standard, standard is very important, important in the real uh, market field uh, com of combination between a uh, charger and uh, vehicles. Uh, chargers and vehicles are different make of manufacturers. So the standard, a uh, technical standard is very important. To maintain such kind of standard, uh, we need to develop the standard itself. We need to maintain the standard uh, depending on the market uh, problems and uh, we, to avoid market problem, we need to so, uh, we need to establish that certification standard and certification scheme also. Such kind of uh, functionality is uh, operated in the association. Okay, so here are uh, some some of the members logo. Uh, you know that uh, Chademo is one of the largest association. Uh, on the uh, in the aspect of uh, uh, EV charging, and uh, our members are totally over 400, almost 500, and all uh, coming from all over the world. And uh, uh, these members are uh, actually working daily and weekly for maintaining the uh, maintaining the quality of charging. The next slide shows just a summary of the number of the Chademo uh, in gro globally. Uh, 35,000 uh, chargers are there in almost 90 countries. And uh, the, from the viewpoint of uh, global distribution of charging systems, uh, Chademo is one of the most successful systems in the world. That's my understanding. And uh, Go to the next slide. As you may know, that we have many internationally defined standards in IEC or IEEE. Uh, as I may I mentioned, uh, from the viewpoint of global distribution and the number from the viewpoint of numbers, uh, Chademo is the most successful one, one of the most successful one. Uh, that uh, the, the statistics shows this. Slide is about the electric vehicle number, uh, charging system by charging system. As you could see, uh, 
Sademo is actually one third of the world except for the Chinese market. And uh, if, if you include Tesla as uh, Sademo compatible, then the two thirds of the electric vehicle global, except for China again, uh, is Sademo compatible. And uh, not only the numbers, but also the quality is, uh, we are always uh, going ahead uh, from viewpoint of power and uh, uh, functionality. Here, uh, this slide shows uh, just the history of Chademo specification version from 0.9 to 3.0. Uh, not only the charging, but also the bi-directional operation. Uh, we have almost 10 years history, uh, market available product history, and uh, dozens of pro uh, market available products of vehicle to X other in global market. So uh, I, I could say that uh, uh, you could do everything with Chademo. Uh, everything uh, you want to do, your worst to do is possible with Chademo. So, and uh, this is just the last final uh, statement is that uh, uh, actually we are uh, facing the real market and the association is going ahead weekly and daily for that. So a good example is this webinar the joint activity between OCA and Chademo, uh, we do not say no if the potential partners has real intention and passion for better electric vehicle mobility. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Imatsu san Let's see, we will now be asking Lonika. Lonika, are you ready? Uh, I'm, yes, I'm ready. Uh, if Milan can put back the slides. Yes, yes, good luck. Next slide, please, Milan, thanks. So good uh, morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lonneke Driessen, and I'd like to uh, present to you a little bit, little bit more about the Open Charge Alliance. As Martijn and Imasu san explained, uh, this webinar is about the work that we did in a joint working group between the Shadow Mo Association and the Open Charge Alliance. And before we go into the, the details and the content of the work that we've done, uh, I'd like to briefly explain uh, the Open Charge Alliance for those of you attending who are not yet familiar with OCA. Next slide, please. So the Open Charge Alliance is a non-profit organization and we were founded uh, in 2014 uh, as a Dutch foundation. And we are also a member organization. And at the moment we have 188 uh, members of the Open Charge Alliance and everyone is welcome uh, to join. So if you'd like to know more about the Open Charge Alliance itself or you'd like to download the protocols, uh, you can go to this website and you can find everything there regarding uh, certification also. Next slide. Um, the, oh, the Open Charge Point Protocol, so OCPP, has been around for quite a while. And basically, uh, we started with the development of this protocol in 2009 when ELADNL was founded, a Dutch organization, and they wanted to roll out a public charging network. Uh, and they wanted to do that multi-vendor in 2009. But back then, the market uh, was very small and there were no standards available. Uh, so that's why ELA decided to, to start with the standard uh, themselves. And the first version of the OCPP protocol was very basic. Basically, uh, it was not much more than uh, start charging, stop charging. Uh, and it grew from there. So over the years, uh, more features and functionalities were added and more people started to contribute to OCPP. Um, and uh, at some point, uh, it was decided that there would be a new uh, foundation formed called the Open Charge Alliance. And the OCPP protocol and the governance of that was transferred from uh, ELAT to the Open Charge Alliance. The version that you may very well know uh, in real life is OCPP 1.6. That, so that's the version that was published in 2015. So it's already five years uh, out there. 
Um, and one year later, we started uh, providing a test tool, so you could check protocol for conformance to the specification. In 2018, we published OSPB 2.0, which um, uh, has uh, uh, additional features uh, uh, to 106. We opened a certification program, so if you have a charger or a backend system that uh, speaks 1.6, you can now get it certified. Um, this year, the 2.0.1 release was published, and we are currently working on a test tool for the 2.0.1 version as well. Next slide, please. So this is a slide of the OCPP community. There, you can download the protocol and you can use it uh, uh, whichever way you like. Um, and we don't uh, keep track of who really implements it. So uh, if you ask how widely uh, spread is the OCPP protocol, we don't have any exact data, but we do know that it is downloaded a lot. So we see where it's downloaded to. Uh, um, um, the last time we looked, it was to 148 countries. So we don't know if they all implement it, but at least they download it and uh, they, they read it and they probably get inspired by it. Uh, and it's downloaded uh, quite frequently. Um, you, if you want to contribute to the standard itself, you can become a member of the OCA. And as I mentioned previously, we now have 188 members. And this graph sort of shows you uh, the members from which continent they are and from which industry they are. So the majority of members currently is from Europe, but we also have a large proportion from uh, North America and Asia. And the first few members from uh, South America and Africa are actually joining OCA. So that's great to see uh, that uh, uh, EV charging is uh, spreading also, um, is more, becoming more and more uh, uh, known in, 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 all, in all those regions of the world. What sort of members uh, are uh, joining the Open Charge Alliance? So mainly they are from the EV charging industry. So companies who develop components or charging stations for and uh, backend systems and, so, and the sorts but we also have uh, utility members and OEM members. So it's, a, it's the overall spectrum uh, in e-mobility. Not all OCA members actively contribute to the standard. So there is, a, of course, a smaller proportion of developers who really actively contribute to the standard and join all the, the weekly calls. And we'd say all in all, there are more or less 34 countries, companies who are uh, actively involved in writing the specification. The next slide. So this is my last slide before, before we go to the to the to the content. Um, the Open Charge Alliance, in that sense, is very similar to the Chadamo Association. So we basically do three things: we develop the protocol. Um, the second thing is we have compliance testing in place, and we have a certification program in place. And the third aspect we do is we promote, of course, the protocol through a plug fest. We have regular plug fest for. Uh, uh, both OCPP 1.6 and OCPP 2.01, where you can either in person uh, or remotely, and of course nowadays all, everything is remote, um, you can test your implementation against uh, other implementations. Um, we have a lot of webinars, and this is a great example of uh, that means of promoting the protocol. And as I've shown you before, we have a website where you can find uh, all the information. So that sort of ends the general introduction of both uh, uh, asso associations. And with that, I'd like to hand over to uh, Nick uh, to get started on uh, the content. So the, the good part of this webinar. Nick, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Lanka. So, um, hi, I'm Nick Oglin, uh, software architect here at uh, Tritium. Uh, manufacturer of uh, EV chargers. Uh, I must admit, uh, when we were, when the prospect of forming this working group was uh, first brought up, I was actually confused uh, because I'm like going OCPP and Chatamo work fine together. Uh, our chargers have run Chatamo since the beginning. Uh, they've run OCPP almost since the beginning. Uh, what is there for a joint working group to cover? Um, and during, as, as we were putting the working group together, uh, reaching out to the Open Charge Alliance membership uh, for more members, uh, reaching out to Chatamo uh, for, for uh, more contributors, we actually realized that, uh, well, I realized that the knowledge of how these two protocols work together uh, isn't actually widely available. 
uh, I had formed a very skewed perspective because I work for a charger manufacturer. We know how they work together. We've made them work together for years. Um, but there's no easy way to actually say, if you're a vehicle manufacturer, for example, very familiar with Chatamo, uh, and you're trying to talk to a charge point operator who's going to be very familiar with the open charge point protocol, uh, you don't necessarily have a common language to talk. Uh, that, that the two standards talk about a lot of the same things, but they talk about them in different ways. Uh, next slide, please, Milan. Uh, and so, uh, as we put the working group together, what we realized is that the things people needed to be able to communicate effectively uh, was they needed to understand each other's terminology uh, and how they matched up or when uh, and, and when the same things were referred to with different words. Um, they needed to understand during the charging process uh, when different events aligned. Again, same events talked about with different words. Uh, and then finally, um, there's a lot of data communicated during a charge session. Uh, and some of that is covered in standard ways as part of the uh, open charge point protocol. Uh, but a lot of it's not strictly speaking needed uh, for charge session management and billing, uh, but can be useful for diagnostics and for understanding what's actually going on in the charging process. Uh, and so there was an opportunity for the joint working group to provide uh, guidance on saying, if you're publishing this information, here is a standard way to do it so that we don't get uh, lots of people publishing the same information in different ways. Uh, and so to make the scope manageable, um, we chose to focus on the most broadly, the newest and most broadly adopted versions of the open charge point protocol, so 1.6 and 2.0.1. Uh, and then similarly, uh, focusing on uh, widely adopted versions of the Chatamo specification in 1.1 and 2.0. Um, initial members of the working group were the ones who set this scope and said, this is what we're going to try to achieve. Uh, and then we've spent the last several months um, getting broad membership from both uh, the Open Charge Alliance members and from Chatamo Association members. Um, excellent work from the uh, writers uh, at the uh, Open Charge Alliance to put together the components of the white paper uh, and then broad participation in the review process to try and make sure that the information being published uh, is useful to readers and actually helps people understand the two different uh, worlds uh, regardless of whether they're coming at it from already being familiar with OCPP and wanting to learn about Chatamo or already being familiar with Chatamo and wanting to learn uh, more about OCPP. Um, and so with that, uh, I will hand over uh, to the uh, introduction of the translation table and what that covers. OK. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, I am Tetsu Yamada, uh, working for TEPCO and also leader of Chademo specification working, uh, I'd be glad to have the opportunity uh, to present this presentation. So I will explain one of the contents in white paper, uh, the translation table. Uh, as you know, uh, Chademo is one of the DC charging standards for connection between the EB and the charging station. Uh, on the other hand, uh, OCPP is a standard co communication protocol between the charging management system and the charging station. So we summarize time definition of EG standard as a translation table. So there are two clauses. Uh, one is definitions, the other is charging states. Uh, next slide, please. So at first, I will talk about clause definitions 
uh, this is an example. So basically, uh, this class shows abbreviation for components and function, which are used in each standard. Uh, as you can see, the same components and the same function are called differently in each standard. So we can make it clear uh, so that reader and developer would not get confused. Uh, this is a definition of example. Uh, next slide, please. And then I will talk about cloud charger states. Uh, in this clause, uh, the terms that show the status during charging, also after and before charging, are explained in each standard. So to give an example, when just meeting connector or the charging sequence does not start, this status is called EB connected in OCPP. On the other hand, uh, called standby in Charemo. Uh, this class is key point to understand sequence diagram specified in the next content. So, uh, yes, this is an uh, explanation of the translation table. Uh, that's all my explanation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please go next slide. Thank you, uh, Yamada. Uh, I'll explain the sequence diagram part of, uh, of what we've done. Um, I will talk about three things. Uh, yeah, the purpose, uh, what Yamada already a bit mentioned. Uh, I'll give an overview of all the sequence diagrams we've created for which use cases we've created sequence diagrams. And I'll zoom into one example to give a bit of a, an overview of um, uh, how uh, such a sequence diagram is built up. Well, the purpose was to show, to graphically show how we combined the sequence diagrams from the OSPP and the CHAdeMO specification because both standards already have sequence diagrams that explain the flow but now we want to uh, show the full flow from car to charging station to CSMS to understand the whole picture so it's easier to understand what needs to be built The use cases we had in scope were the regular starting of a charging session, uh, the stopping of a charging session from the charging station side, uh, and the stopping of a session from the EV side, and also the abnormal termination set of a session. So in case, for example, there was a power loss uh, and uh, how the charging station and the car will will handle such an event and how uh, they will report this to the CSMS. And finally, we also created the sequence diagram for dynamic control. This means um, how uh, should the charging station and the car behave when uh, the charging, uh, when the CSMS sends, for example, a, a charging profile to the charging station and tries to control the, the charging current uh, during a session. I will zoom into the, the first one, so just uh, the regular starting of a charging session. I'll show the diagram in three parts, so this is the, the first part. Um, so first, the EV driver will uh, plug in uh, his cable. I will uh, use my laser pointer so you can see where I'm pointing at. Um, and then the charging station will send an OSPP message to the CSMS. So a status notification request to, uh, yeah, to say that the connector is occupied. There is no uh, 
Chademo communication at this point yet. Um, in case uh, for OSPP 2.0.1, which is uh, displayed in this sequence diagram, the um, charting station will send a transaction event request if it's configured to already start a transaction after cable plugin. Um, and for OSPP 1.6, we created separate sequence diagrams because OSP 1.6 and 2.0.1 messages are uh, different. So uh, that's why we decided to create separate sequence diagrams for them. Then uh, you can see that uh, the sequence diagram also displays states. So these are the states referred to in the Chademo specification. So you can clearly see in what state of the process we are. So for state A, there's no vehicle connection, then it will trans make the transition to state B, where there is a vehicle connection. Then the EV driver can authorize a, a start. There will be an authorized message sent from the charging station to the CSMS, and the transaction will be authorized to start. And the charging station will send a charge sequence signal to the car. Then the next slide. Um, this is state C. Here the CAN communication from Chademo is uh, start. So first uh, I've listed here all the information that can be transmitted from the vehicle uh, in three uh, yeah, message data parts. So the, the 100 message, 101 and 102. Uh, these are all defined within the Chademo specification. And the, uh, from this moment on, Chademo will continuously uh, transmit this information. And after the compliancy time, within this compliancy time of one half a second, the uh, CAN communication needs to be started from also from the charging station to EV. And then this information can be transmitted. Uh, then there is an optional block so this is this may be transmitted if uh, this is needed from the charging station manufacturer perspective uh, and that's an extra additional transaction event request this this is not mandatory and then there are some signals being sent uh, for example the vehicle charging enabled so the EV will tell the charging station that it will proceed to the charging. Then the, the most important uh, part of this slide is that uh, there uh, in state D, uh, the charging station and the EV will prepare uh, to start the energy offer. And at the end it will start and that will make the transition to state E. And that's the actual charging state. and uh, in OSPP, uh, there will be a transaction event request message sent that will state that the vehicle and the charging station are actually uh, charging at that mo moment. So this is a bit of an overview of how we designed these sequence diagrams. You can clearly see which Chademo messages are being transmitted and which OSPP messages need to be transmitted at what point in the process. Okay, then I will uh, give uh, the word to uh, Frank. He will explain a bit more about the uh, additional information from Chademo that can be mapped within OSPP. Yes, uh, thank you, Milan. <clears throat> well, good morning, good afternoon. This is uh, Frank Weaver. And I will uh, explain a little bit about how we are able to represent, to publish the Shamo data using the OSPP uh, device model. And uh, Jamila, can you give me the next slide, please? I will first explain a little bit about the, uh, the device model. Next uh, bullet, please. So the device model is a way to report the data from the charging station to the 
central management system. So uh, using a kind of report mechanism, the charging station can report about components that are in it and variables that are associated with it. So you can get really detailed information from the charging station. And uh, one of the things we can do is that we can report information about the connected vehicle. So the connected vehicle is then reported by the charging station as a connected EV component. And in that uh, connected EV component, you can then, uh, for example, display information that you get from the Shadow interface, because Shadow reports information like the charging current and voltage, or the total capacity of the battery, the estimated charging state, uh, time, uh, state of charge, and, and several other variables, which I will show in a minute. So uh, this can be actually very interesting information if you, uh, you know, want to do, for example, uh, accurate load balancing or smart charging, because you can use that information to uh, yeah, exactly tailor your charging plan to the capacities of the vehicle that is connected at this point in time. Next slide, please. So, uh, in the following uh, three slides, I will show you just quickly uh, the kind of information that we get from Shadow and that we represent in the, uh, in the model. So, whenever a, a vehicle is connected to the charging station, the charging station can uh, report this connected vehicle as a connected EV component. And if it's connected, it will have the av available variable set to true. So then you know, okay, there is indeed a vehicle connected. And then there are a set of current and voltage parameters that you get uh, from Shalomo. So we get, for example, the minimum charge current, the H100 uh, variable from, from, from Shalomo. And that is uh, exposed as a variable called DC current dot min set, which means that it's the minimal set value for the DC current. And this can actually be a very interesting variable because uh, it means that if the vehicle goes below this charge current, it will stop charging. So this can be interesting information and we can use that in OCPP uh, as part of the charging profile where you can specify a, a minimum charging current that has to remain available at all times. So there are also things like uh, voltage as you see here, but I will not go into the details of that anymore. So can I get the next slide please? Um, Now there's a set of variables that's related to energy and state of charge and, and time. So uh, we get, for example, the uh, total capacity of the traction battery, uh, which is very interesting to know because then you know, have an idea how long it will take to, to charge uh, full. And it's, it's reported as the energy import uh, uh, value. Uh, we have a remaining time, uh, an estimated charging time that is reported by Shadow. We have the uh, state of charge, the actual state of charge value, and the what Shadow calls the charge rate reference constant, which basically means that you can set that, for example, to 90%, and that then will mean that basically at 90% the vehicle is considered to be fully charged. Next slide, please. And then finally, we have a set of uh, status values that we get from from Shadow. <coughs> Uh, so you can get one or more of these values can be part of the charging states uh, set variable from uh, the device model. So you can get messages like battery under voltage or over voltage or temperature deviation or charging system errors. So these are then uh, reported in this uh, device model variable. And that's a kind of detailed information that you would normally not get on the charging safety management system. So it could be useful for, for troubleshooting, for example, if uh, charging fails uh, from the charger, you just get a message back that it's not charging. But then in the device model, you could see what is exactly the reason why it's not charging. Okay, next uh, slide, please. So <clears throat> it's important to uh, realize that it's in the end, it's the charging station that decides which state, or actually the implementer of the charging station, that decides which attributes it wants to publish in the device model. It's not uh, mandatory. Next bullet. So 
it, it is completely optional to use because we don't use this data to control the charging. I mean, the existing OCP messages for starting charging, stopping charging, and setting charging schedules, they are sufficient to, to control all the charging. This is just data that gives you additional uh, information. Next bullet. So uh, we mostly think it can be very valuable info for smart charging because you know a little bit more about the battery, like its capacity and its estimated charging time and the charging minimal charging current, for example. So you can use it to tailor your smart charging schedule exactly to the connected vehicle that you have. And uh, yeah, I think this is very uh, valuable extension uh, to OSPB to be able to uh, provide this information for you. So now we get to the questions and answers. I think it has to go back to uh, Martijn now. Yes, thank you, Frank. Um, and thank you, everybody else. I would like to ask you, uh, all panelists who did the presentations, to turn on their cameras so we can uh, answer a few questions. Let's see. We had some questions coming in during the presentation. Some of them may have been answered in a presentation, but I don't think it's uh, it's wrong to uh, repeat them. I will start off uh, with this one. Is a vehicle to grid service available for AC connections or is it only available for DC charging? Who can I give uh, the microphone? Frank, are you capable of answering this? Uh, well, I think if it's about uh, V2G and AC charging, it should best be answered by uh, somebody from uh, Shadow. Oh, okay. Mr. Imatsu, should I repeat the question? Uh, yes, please. Uh, about the AC bidirectional, right? It's uh, about uh, the grid, so the AC uh, directional. Yes. The issue we are talking about in this webinar is the uh, CHAdeMO OCPP compatibility, and CHAdeMO is uh, for DC only. So uh, in this case, the CHAdeMO VTX is just for DC. But we understand that the, uh, we have a uh, business case which is suitable for AC bidirectional, which is going to be defined is going to be defined in another place. That's my understanding. Okay, thank you. Let's see another one. Um, where is connected EV specified? Um, so let's see the, the, the question asker, the said, um, I did not find it in the version of the OSPP 2.0.1 spec I have downloaded. Let's see, uh, perhaps Milan, can you answer this question? Uh, it's currently not in the appendix of, uh, of OSPP 2.0.1, um, but we are still discussing how we want to uh, uh, completely uh, design this and we will be um, releasing a new version of the appendix. Uh, we created the appendix uh, because we uh, can update it more regularly done than the specification itself. And in that version, we will be adding this component. I, I'll make one note from the working group discussions as well. Um, uh, in the white paper, uh, the the device model information is split between two components. Um, I forget the name of the second one, but it's Chatamo specific, uh, and that is information that only makes sense for Chatamo vehicles. Uh, where the connected EV concept came from uh, is the information that Chatamo provides that other charging standards also provide. Um, so it it made sense to define a generic component. Yeah, and uh, the other component is called the CHAdeMO controller component that contains the CHAdeMO specific information. And that's already currently in, inside the uh, appendix. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, a device model question. Uh, can the management system influence the CHAdeMO charging by changing these device model for, uh, variables? No, I, I can answer that. 
uh, all these variables that are reported in the device model are read-only variables. So they're only for information. So you cannot uh, change them, for example, to influence the charitable charging process. If you want to change the charging process, for example, uh, in the case of a demand response situation, or you want to submit the charging schedule, then you should use the regular OSPP messages that exist uh, for that. So that we don't get any conflicts there. Okay, let's see. They are coming in fast right now, so <laughs> I will have to read them. Uh, let's see. The, um, ah, yes, this one by Timo Hassler is a pretty, a pretty long one. Question regarding device model usage. Uh, what is the reason behind using the device model and a monitoring approach? Uh, an example by monitoring uh, the state of charge dot actual instead of a traditional OSPP request response mechanism, encoding that information into the JSON messages, uh, for example, a trans uh, transaction event. Um, to uh, Timo, it seems like two approaches are being mixed here. Is this a question? <coughs> One I can yeah. uh, uh, well, in a there are two approaches. Uh, like I said, the existing OSPP messages are definitely enough to uh, to control the charging process. So in a transaction event uh, request, you uh, may get, for example, values about the state of charge, if, if that is reported as a, as a meter value. But what we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to provide an easy way to, uh, for information, for read-only, uh, make any values that, values that we get from the Shadow interface just available for, for reading. A certain information like uh, the battery capacity or the estimated uh, charging time uh, are, are not available as, as meter values. So the only way you, you can read this information is through the device model. So that's why it's a uh, useful extension, but not required to, to support the charging. I hope it answers the question. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, let's continue. Uh, is plug and charge possible? And if yes, how to identify EV or user? Let's see, Milan? Um, well, uh, OSPP uh, would be able to accommodate this, but I think uh, from someone from Chademo, can answer whether it is is um, would this be possible with Chademo? Okay. And Sorry, Imas, uh, Imasu or yeah. Yamada? May I? Yeah. yeah uh, Chademo actually is a case with a kind of optional uh, information exchange named a vehicle identification number, uh, which is not coded actually. Uh, so by using that one uh, with some uh, interactive security information exchange, then uh, plug and charge is going to be possible. But again, the signal itself uh, is optional. So uh, OEM, EV OEM must um, apply such a uh, number so that the charger can identify the vehicle. That's uh, the first step. Um, from a charge manufacturer point of view, uh, plug and charge gets used to, to, as a term a couple of different ways. Uh, there is a very specific meaning uh, which applies to a particular auto charging implementation using one specific charging standard. Um, and that, in that sense, that's specific to that charging standard. Um, in the generic sense uh, of having vehicles identify themselves and and uh, and make the authorization decision based on vehicle identity. Uh, that's where Amazu's answers apply, that there are ways to do that with Chatamo. Um, they're just not widely spread yet. Okay, thank you. Very elaborate. Um, another question. In smart charging, we need to change charging current. Are we allowed to change current during charge in Chatamo? 
Uh, yes, that is possible. Uh, you can do that with one of the extended functions, and that's the dynamic control use case I mentioned during the presentation about the sequence diagrams. And uh, that explains how uh, this is possible with the two standards. Okay. And um, is the OCTT prepared for this implementation in OCPP 1.6? I think we will do the testing tool, I think. Yes, because um, as was mentioned by Nick already, uh, the Chademo and OCPP specifications already work together. We are just explaining how. There has been no change to the protocol, to the standards themselves. Okay, thank you. Another question coming in. Shadmo supports bidirectional power transfer. Does OCPP support bidirectional power transfer related messages? And if so, uh, starting from what version? Yeah, I can answer this. Uh, yes, we are uh, working on creating an uh, extension for OCPP to support uh, bidirectional uh, power transfer. Uh, so at the moment in uh, 201, we are doing uh, our, our first uh, trials with, uh, with a number of manufacturers uh, for this. And this will be finally included in the 2.1 uh, release. And we will also release it as an uh, extension, uh, as an uh, customization in the 201 release. And so there we have the, the dedicated messages to really support bidirectional power transfer. Uh, but we know that in, in practice it is already possible to do bidirectional power transfer with OCPP 1.6, for example, if you specify a charging schedule with uh, yeah, negative uh, uh, currents, uh, special dedicated messages for that in 1.6. Okay, let's see. Um... Another one, is there at a CSM, a CSMS level a way to get the vehicle identification number, an example uh, VIN for instance, uh, within OSPP transaction data that is enabled by Shadmo interface and how uh, CSMS can know which vehicle is currently in transaction. Uh, I know that today some CP providers are using one ID tag for each vehicle ID but it requests a mapping table at CSMS level. Is Shadmo enriching the interface with? Mm. Let's see. CSMS, I think, Nick, are you able to answer this? Yeah, I, I think this ties back into uh, Mazu-san's answer earlier, uh, that there is an ID that the vehicle can cons transmit. Uh, it's not necessarily tied directly to the VIN, it's more tied to the charge controller. Um, but the, yeah, currently that information is not, uh, I believe it's included in the device model uh, in the white paper. Um, it isn't uh, defined as mapping to the standard authorized messages yet. Um, so, so, yeah. So, I, th I think the answer to the question is no, it's not currently tied into the transaction data. At least not oh, directly. Okay. Let's see. Um, one of Shadow's features is V2H or V2X. Uh, mm -hmm. I am wondering if this feature will be available with the collaboration of Shadow and OCPP. Maybe Imatsu san, can you answer this? Uh, it, I believe that's the one that the next step we are right now consider, considering, right? Uh, excuse me, would you say, would you repeat the question again? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, one of Shadow's features is uh, V2H, uh, V2X. Uh, I am wondering if this feature will be available with the collaboration of Shadow and OCPP. I, I guess that's the next uh, our next joint activity. Okay, thank you. 
Am um, I understanding correct? Yes. And um, let's see. Uh, we have a room for a couple more questions. They are still coming in. I want to let everybody know uh, we will lock all questions. So if we can't answer them today uh, or in this session, we will come back to you uh, through uh, email. Uh, so we will uh, lock everything and we will uh, reach out uh, for any answers if we can give them. Uh, I have one more. Uh, is possible use of Shadmo 0.9 with OSPP uh, or is, sorry, is it possible to use Shadmo 0.9 with OCPP or is it not compatible? Uh, I, I can answer that one. Uh, yes, they do work together. Uh, there are some features that don't work quite as well. Uh, and in particular, there's a, um, there's a uh, EV proximity line that is optional in 0.9. Uh, and so there are some there are some 0 0.9 vehicles where the charger will have trouble detecting that the vehicle is attached. Uh, and that it, essentially that almost always works fine, um, but you will occasionally run into difficulties with those cars um, not correctly detecting when they've been unplugged. So, Do we have uh, some notes for this uh, in, inside uh, the white paper that explains this a little bit more how to handle these kind of situations? Okay, thank you. Let's see, we have a lot of questions. Most of them are answered already. And looking at the clock, we had uh, reserved 60 minutes for this. Um, maybe this one also is a last uh, question. Uh, will the charging sequence diagrams be shared after the seminar? Question for Milan, I guess. Um, well, the answer is yes, uh, and uh, I will have another slide after this, uh, which explains that we will release a white paper that will contain all these sequence diagrams and information about the translation table and device model, so it's all in there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Milan. Um, let's see, I will be closing this Q&A session, so you can put on the next slide. And um, I want to inform everyone, there will be a white paper about this subject available today on uh, at least our website, opchargealliance.org. Here we go. And uh, we will have another session here in Europe this afternoon, um, but it's uh, it, uh, check out our web page for your uh, local time. Uh, so you can uh, have another session, but it's the same one as this one. Uh, and you can ask questions again, um, but we will release uh, the white paper during the day. If there are any questions, please contact us or contact Shadamo for uh, more information about this, uh, this topic. I would like to thank everyone uh, for their attention. I would like to thank the panelists for their clear um, presentations and um, uh, valuable information about this, uh, this combination. And, um, Yes, all questions um, will be uh, gathered, locked, and uh, um, we will do a review on uh, on subjects, and uh, we will come back to you about this. I want to close this uh, webinar now, and I want to wish you a very uh, good day, and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.